Hey guys, what's up? Alec back with the Daily Stock Market. We see a pretty red day in the market today. Snapchat down 9%, DraftKings down 8%, Affirm down 6%, Roblox down 5%, so on and so forth. Today, we're going to jump into the best stocks under $10 per share. So make sure you stay throughout this entire video if you have a smaller budget and want to own more shares of a company. So without further ado, smash that like button and let's jump right into the video. Okay, so the first one up is also one of the most requested stocks is SoFi. A lot of you guys want me to talk about it. So it's up 10% in the week, up 22% in the month. And from its lowest point, which was $5 per share, it's already up 43%. So if you bought at $5 per share, you definitely already made some money. So let's not miss out on that dip on SoFi again. Price alerts for me are set right around $5.75. Let's dive a little bit deeper on SoFi. Okay, so the first analyst article we pull up, we see warning SoFi is high risk of performing badly. SoFi Technologies has characteristics which have been historically associated with poor future stock performance. SoFi has inferior profitability and decelerating momentum and when compared to other financial stocks, to the point that it gets a sell rating from our quant rating system. Stocks rated sell or worse by our quant rating system have massively underperformed the S&P 500. As this article will describe, the company has returned to total assets negative 5%, while the financial sectors is the average on a 1.3%. Okay, so if I profitability grade, here you can see net income per employee is an F. Okay, it's negative. 193k cash from operations negative 1 billion and you can uh, see to the right that number to the right is the sector medium um, what other people what other companies in that sector are performing at returns on total assets negative 5% return on common equities negative 24% net income margin is negative 50%. The company has a one year price performance of negative 43%, while financial sector median is 4%. Okay, we also see a one year price performance, negative 43%, nine month price performance, negative 53, 56%, and so on and so forth. Due to these factors, our quant model has rated SoFi technology as a sell, and the company has an overall rate of 576 out of possible 200, 2,677 in the financial sector. Compared to the S&P 500, stocks rated sell or worse were down 20% on average per year, year over year for the last 10 years. However, if we turn to what analysts have to say, they have an on average 49% upside on SoFi in the next 12 months, which is definitely possible. Remember, I'm looking for that $5 price point, $5.70, because I think there's uh, the risk versus reward at that price point is going to be a lot better. Here we can see that these analysts are coming in a long time ago as well, and they're not the best analysts in the world. So again, we got to take this with a grain of salt. But in my opinion, I'm not buying right now unless I'm going to be holding for long term. Remember, they IPO'd at $11. So I think $11 is a fair price for them. But it could take two to three years to get to that profitability level that the stock market wants to see. That's why I think under $6 per share is a better risk first reward for SoFi. Okay, so the next one is Robinhood. Let's dive in and see if they are a good purchase. Okay, so in the past week from lows, they're up around 16%. And from their very bottom, they're up around 27%. There's more upward potential to be had with Robinhood. My price alerts are set closer to that $8.50 range. Under $9 is a little bit more attractive for Robinhood. And if we read some summaries of some analyst articles, we can see that Robinhood has lost 85% of his value since going public last summer due to a bad mix of softening user growth and poor retail investing market climate this year. But the recent acceleration of, of developments made at Robinhood's crypto platform underscores renewed fundamental growth opportunities. Robinhood announced on April 12th the addition of Compound uh, Polygon, Shiba, and Solana to the growing list of cryptocurrency supported that you can buy with on Robinhood, paired with other new features rolled out across 
its broader investing platform, as well as continued efforts on realizing its international aspirations, Robinhood is setting itself up for massive growth horizon ahead, although valuations have been significantly compressed. Across the board and within Robinhood's peer group, its underlying business growth potential alone is coming. Years could spell further upside for Hood stock. Okay, so this analyst is saying if you're going to be investing, it's going to take years, could take a long time. They're really banking on the crypto aspect of Robinhood, and they're saying that it's lost 85% of its value since IPO. There's a chance that it could pop up. Here's a different side of the coin, and you can see a summary here. It says Robinhood no longer provide, provides guidance as the company enters a new chapter of its life. Robinhood struggles to grow its user metric. Users struggle to find positive value from its offerings. Hood remains over value even now, even at $10 per share, up against the most difficult comparable with the last year. The remainder of 2022 should be easier for the business. As always, happy to discuss this thesis more in the comment section below. Okay, so that is true. 2022 was a very hard year for stocks and for crypto. So the years ahead should be a lot easier for Robinhood, and this is a stock that could make its way back closer to the IPO price. However, there's huge risks involved. So closer to that $8 range or new all-time lows would be a lot more attractive for Robinhood. Okay, next one up is Fubo TV at $3.29 per share, down 6% on the day. And as you can see, they're even up 12% on the week. And in the last three months, they're down 61%. The stock has absolutely been slaughtered. And they're down 86% in the last year. And from all-time highs, they're down almost 90%, which is absolutely crazy to think about a stock being down that much. This was a $33 per share stock. So for this stock to get back to all-time highs, it would have to 10x or even 15x. Because if we zoom out a little bit further, we can see that the true all-time highs lie closer to $48 per share. So this is a high risk, high reward play stocks that could 10x in this video. We're going over them now. So let's dive in deep to see what the risks are with Fubo TV and what the upside potential could bring us. Okay, so we see another warning for Fubo TV, high risk of performing badly. The company has a total return on assets of negative 37%, while the communication sector is around 3% in the median. Okay, so for net income per employee, they have negative 2 million. Okay, and the sector average, you can compare on the right. So operating form, um, from operations, negative 200 million. Return on total assets, negative 37%. Return on total capital, negative 28%. Return on common equity, negative 167%. How is that even possible? That's such a big number. So now you can kind of see why uh, Fubo TV has dropped 90%. Some of these performances are very, very bad. And you can see the valuation grade is even a D. Okay, because if we look at the, the company as a price to sales, a forward price to sales ratio of 4.7, while the communication service sector is 1.7. So that implies that Fubo TV, even at $3 per share, is still overvalued. Okay, the price to book is almost five, which is extremely high. It's twice the average. Price to sales forward is 4.7. Price to book is almost six on the forward. Holy cow. Price to sales 4.7. EV sales, uh, 4.7. So I hope you guys don't mind when I talk about some of these lesser cared about stocks like Fubo TV, ChargePoint, and some of these other ones, for example. I think it's good to dive deep in them because at one point, these stocks like Fubo TV was a popular stock in the retail and nobody's really doing updates on these stocks anymore. So at least I want to talk about them, talk about the risks moving forward at $3.29 cents uh, per share and also the rewards moving forward so here we, what we have on average analysts have a 135 percent upside on fubo tv to seven dollars and 75 cents per share that's all it has to get to is only seven dollars for 135 percent upside 
However, you can see some of these analysts have not reiterated this for a long time. Okay, in just the last month, we only have around six analysts coming in. Now, we do have some good ones like Daniel Salmon, uh, Philip Krusik is another good one, JPM four-star analyst. He had a sell on Fubo TV, however, and also Laura Martin from Needham had a $5 price point on Fubo TV. So if you guys appreciate me taking the time out and talking about some of these lesser cared about stocks like Matterport and ChargePoint and Fubo TV and Robinhood, make sure you leave a big thumbs up. And if you want more stocks to for me to talk about more stocks under $10 per share, make sure you subscribe with post notifications on. So the next one up is Matterport at $5.50 per share up 13% in the week, and they were close to a 20% gain on the week, a little bit of momentum there, down 27% in the last three months, down 61% in the past year, and from all-time highs, they're down around 83%. Now, you can kind of cut this out of the equation. This big spike they had here was just because of all, of, all the metaverse hype that everyone was talking about. So, I think a fair price for them is closer to $10 per share, which would be 100% upside from the current price, but I want to see them to all-time lows or even closer to $3 per share before I buy $100 or more worth of Matterport. The good thing is if it's $3 per share and you put $300 in, you can get 100 shares of Matterport, and if they ride up to $15, $15 per share, that could be $1,500 that you made out of Matterport. So let's talk about some of the risks and talk about some of the rewards a little bit further. Here we see Matterport has enormous scale and technological advantages. The main challenge for Matterport remains effectively monetizing its business and turning into a stable and growing uh, reoccurring revenues if it can accomplish that feat while retaining its competitive standing. Matterport could make investors very rich. Okay, formidable competitive advantages. The biggest reason why we're bullish on Matterport is because it truly possesses a dominant competitive position in the space. It has both by far the best technology and the most data and the first mover advantage in the space with an accompanying name brand recognition, kind of like a Tesla of their space. On top of that, has managed to secure some key strategic partnerships that should open up sustainable growth avenues for the company in the years to come. They have 100 times more digital maps of buildings than the rest of the industry combined in their database. Not only does this simply mean that they have more experience in the space, it also means that they have the by far the most valuable database in the industry, putting a powerful moat around the subscription-based businesses. As that digital twin database continues to grow, their subscription becomes even more valuable, affording them even greater pricing power. It also deters major tech players from trying to enter the space because the cost and time evolved into developing what they've already done is going to be hard to replicate. Significant risk to keep in mind, while Matterport certainly has the potential to make investors rich, the risks are also elevated. First and foremost, the company is at least a few years away from profitability. While the trend is positive, the gross margins are clearly very impressive. The company still needs to execute on a lot of its growth potential in order to scale to a point of being profitable. That alone adds obvious risks to the investment thesis. The ultimate amount and timeline to profitability can be hard to pinpoint exactly. And meanwhile, investors are seeing runaway inflation eat into the purchasing power of the capital that is tied up in an unprofitable company, which is why they're down around 80%. Another big risk facing Matterport is that it's a real estate stock. Given its current heavy weighting towards the real uh, residential space, it is heavily dependent on the volatility of home sales. If a lot of homes are changing hands, demand for its technology and services will generally be higher. If not, demand can plummet. Investor takeaway, PropTech is an underhyped opportunity in our view and is positioned to generate significant value for the broader economy in the next five to 10 years. World-class real estate investors like 
BAM seem to believe so as well, further strengthening our conviction in the sector. So keep in mind, if you're going to be investing in something like Matterport or in this sector at all, it could be a five to 10 year investment. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's not a short term thing. You're looking at five to 10 years. So this is an extremely long investment that could potentially not even pan out. There's so much high risk with stocks under $10 per share. But if you're watching this video, you should already know that. At the moment, Matterport looks like it could be giving, could be a massive winner over the long term given its inside track position in the digital twin space in combination with its aggressive move to build up a massive database of t a digital twin and formation of strategic partnerships with leading tech companies. After the latest dramatic sell-off of the stock, Matterport looks like it could generate strong returns over the next several years. However, it is a high-risk investment with serious questions about management's ability to overcome profitability headwinds and turn into a cash printing machine for shareholders within a reasonable amount of time. In fact, compared to other property technology stocks, we are analyzing a high yield investor. Matterport is likely the riskiest. So just remember, keep that in mind with stocks under $10 per share, they're extremely risky. Comment down below and like this video if you wanna see a part two of the best stocks under $10 per share and also comment what stock you want me to talk about. These stocks on this list were really high risk, high reward, but with stocks under $10 per share, that's typically what you can expect. The future videos coming up later on this week will be less risky, so make sure you're subscribed with post notifications on so you don't miss any of those future uploads. Thank you guys for all the love and support you've been showing on the channel. Even though the stock market has been rough, we've still been making money even when the stock market has been going down with some puts. So if you want to get on the close friends list, make sure you message me here on Instagram. I show all my buys, how much I buy, when I'm buying, what stocks I'm buying, when I'm selling, and I even post put options, calls, and puts as well. Okay, so... Other than that, just like this video, share with a friend, comment below what you guys want to see next, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember, don't time the market, buy the market. Peace.